So Rockset is a search and analytics database that provides low latency response time over real time data. This is a third video in the Rockset database internal series and in this one we touch upon the implementation nuances of how queries are executed end to end along with it how it scales horizontally in the cloud. But before we begin I would highly recommend you to check out the first two videos of the series where we spoke about its ALT architecture and how it stores the data in converge index in RocksDB cloud. Right? Now, let's jump in on how the execution happens the execution who gets the request the request always comes to the aggregator nodes the aggregator nodes after getting the request speaks to leaf nodes gets the data executes it aggregates it and responds back right now let's go into slightly specific implementation details of it now how first of all leaf nodes is not a single machine there are a set of machine acting as leaf nodes right now when you have set of machines acting as leaf nodes how is data distributed between them? So here, the first key detail is that Rockset does document-based sharding, which means whenever you are ingesting a document with a specific ID in Rockset, given the n number of machines in the leaf nodes that it has, it would take the ID, pass it through the hash function, get an index and stores that document in that corresponding leaf node. Right? So that document is made for that corresponding leaf node. This means, it has a pro and a con like everything in computer science, everything is a trade-off. Now this, there's an interesting trade-off over here. Now given that we are doing document-based sharding, so we don't know for a query that we are looking for. Let's say I want to look for select year comma count star from movies, which means I want to find out for each year that has happened, how many movies came out in that year. Right? I want to fire this query. I cannot just go to one machine and fire the query. I need to go to all the leaf node because my data for that corresponding year could be present anywhere, right? So my query is always fanned out. You'd say, but Arpit, isn't this slow? It's not slow. We are actually using CPU across all machines, which is actually good, right? Because now we can fire queries on all machine, leverage the CPUs on all machine, which gives me answer to its own copy of data. Then I aggregate and respond back, right? So this is a very thoughtful design decision that they took. You got a way to store the data in single node, that node is responsible for it, but now your query needs to be fanned out. Right? Okay. Now what? How is query executed? Now we understood that the data is distributed across multiple node and whenever a query comes in, it would need to be fanned out across multiple nodes, like the multiple NEEP nodes. So what happens? How is query executed? The query comes to the Rockset SQL API, which is then which then goes to the aggregator nodes. The whole idea is the Rockset SQL API, it takes care of authentication, authorization, and all the metadata management. And then aggregator receives the SQL query. Aggregator does the standard what a typical SQL query execution engine does, which is it passes the query, creates a parse tree out of it, then it creates and optimizes the execution plan. It uses a cost-based optimizer, like almost all standard optimizer that exists. And then it creates a final operator DAG. Now what is this operator DAG? DAG is basically directed acyclic graph. So what it does is, it says for each node what it needs to do. That's what it operator DAG is. So operator DAG is actually broken into instructions for each node. And the each node instruction is like, who is the predecessor of this node? What is the operation that we need to do? And who is the successor of this? Which means from which you should be pulling the data what you should do with the data and what you need to do after the data. So to whom you need to send the data. That's what this is telling you. Right? Now here are some very interesting details. Aggregator sends out this instruction, this final operator DAG to all the leaf nodes. And for each node, there is a, there is a clear instruction on to whom, from whom it would get the data, what it needs to do and where it needs to send the data. So when it gets this, when each node gets this, the way the execution starts it, every single node will open up the ports. The persistent connections will be built across the layers, right? Across the layer from leaf to aggregators, across all the nodes that are there. The persistent connections would be built and the leaf node will start iterating the range lookup or whatever it needs to do with that. It would start generating the data or rather producing the data. Basically what it means is, let's say I fired a range, let's say my operator DAG says that leaf one, you do the range lookup on this range. Let's say uh, 
C dot year dot star, for example, right? it would do range lookup on that. And as and when it is iterating, it would be emitting, it would be streaming data to aggregator. Aggregator will perform the action that is supposed to, which is join an aggregation, whatever it needs to do. And it streams tuples to the, to the Rockset SQL API, which can send the data to the client, right? This way, your client does not need to wait for the entire data to be computed before it gets it. It gets the data as and when it is ready. So these persistent connections play a very important role into seeing a continuous stream of results being streamed to the client, giving client a great user experience. And now client, because it is inter, it is getting a stream of data or stream of tuples, which means it can initiate its processing rather than waiting for the entire result to be computed. Very interesting design decision, right? Okay. Now let's talk about scaling. Now we understood how the query gets executed, the importance of persistent connections, the operator DAG and what it does, right? Now let's talk about scaling horizontally. Now here, if you look carefully, the compute nodes are stateless. Any request can go to any node and every node is equally capable of handling that request because it just needs to create this operator DAG, parse the query, create the operator DAG and fan it out across leaf nodes, right? So here, the key thing is that this is completely stateless so I can scale this with normal auto scaling policies. So they are on Kubernetes. So they use HPA horizontal pod auto scaler to scale these things horizontally. Right. But what about storage? How do you scale storage? Because there is a chance that I have large number of aggregator nodes or the compute nodes, which are ex executing the SQL query, but it needs to talk to the leaf node to get the data. But what if the storage becomes the bottleneck? I cannot tolerate that. How can you make storage auto scale or storage horizontally scalable? Remember from the first video where we spoke about that they have RocksDB cloud, which is their variant of RocksDB, which is optimized for cloud. They push the SST files on S3 and S3 gives them the durability, right? It's a very important design decision, right? So now what they do is Rockset, because all the files or all the SST files are actually on S3, what they can do is if there is a shortage of leaf node or if leaf nodes are becoming bottleneck, they spin up a leaf node, ask it to download the relevant SST files and then it can start serving the request, right? That, that, it is that simple, right? That's the beauty of this. So whenever the query is in this is basically zero copy read replica because there is not that from one machine I need to copy from another machine or something. It's literally one new machine spinning up downloading data from S3 and start serving the request. Right? But remember the files that are there on S3 are immutable. SST files are immutable. So they can easily download the data. And now your queries, your storage layer can scale horizontally. If as many requests comes in, I can spin up as many leaf nodes with as many SST files as I want. And my, and my query execution can be taken care of with ease. Right? This is where zero copy read replicas kick in. Right? Really fascinating design decision. Now, even if you get a burst of traffic on your query side, not a problem, right? The best part is you can not only horizontally scale out your aggregator nodes to handle large number of queries, you can also scale out your storage and shrink it. Why? Because your data is durably stored on S3. If you're not, if you see that there is not much query happening for a certain set of SST files, you can chop off those nodes if you want, right? So this way you get the scaling side, like you can horizontally scale out and you can reduce the number of machines that you want pretty quickly. It gives you an ability to handle the burst and be cost efficient at the same time. And this is how Rockset is actually a truly horizontally scalable database in cloud that offers very low latency queries on top of data. Pretty interesting stuff, right? And by the way, I would highly recommend if you're interested, their code base on RocksDB cloud is open source. You can find it on github.com slash rockset slash rocksdb hyphen cloud. It's pretty interesting. Go through it, skim through the code. You'll learn a lot through that, right? So yeah, this was the third video of my series on Rockset database internals. And yeah, in this one, we spoke about how it executes the query and how it is horizontally scalable, how it scales compute, how it scales storage and how it saves cost and handles burst. Right. And yeah, this was the third video of my series. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Adam.